Access granted. Subject. Interview with Tom Whalen. Body. On the 1st of November 2021, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80, was tasked with the mission of interviewing the talented artist behind the wonderful packaging artwork for not one, but two G.I. Joe classified figures, Master of Disguise Zartan and the brand new Ali Viper. Here's what we could show you from this G14 classified interview. Access granted. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force Redacted. I am Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80, and joining me today to chat about his incredible work on multiple The Greedy Bugger pieces of G.I. Joe classified packaging artwork is multi-talented artist Tom Whalen. Hello there, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me, but how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. And yet you're right. I'm greedy. I would do that entire line if I could. I would take every single one and clear my plate and get them all done. But uh, Dude, yes, I'm maybe, greedy, but thankful. If it got you a figure each time, I'll right. do it. I'll do it. I can't even, I'm not even that good at drawing. I'll do it. <laughs> Everything would be stick figures on the front right. of it. If that's the prize... So if that's the carrot that's dangling. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, that would probably be motivation enough for me to become a world-renowned artist. Uh, right. But no, mate, uh, absolutely sens- sensational work. Congratulations, first and foremost. Um, saw you on uh, 1027 for the uh, the kind of Pulse Premium members, and yeah. you revealed some cool stuff on there. But before we get into, I suppose, like the before we get to the, the, the G.I. Joe stuff, uh, let's talk a little bit about your background, if that's okay, just to kind of start sure. off with. Um, for those that may not know, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you got into art and that kind of stuff, please. Yeah, I always, I can boil it down really quickly to uh, my grandmother owned a candy store when I was young and uh, I spent so much time in there at the spinner rack reading specifically, really, I can point back to G.I. Joe, the issues of G.I. Joe that she would like kind of take off the rack and put in the back of the store um, to save for me. Oh, that's um, so sweet. Yeah, so I can I can I even see the hiding spot she had under like a blotter on a desk. Um, she would always pull out the issues for me. And that really, like, just, I can remember that was the point where I started to pay attention to artwork and got inspired. And from there on, like, around sixth grade, um, I would I would just draw and draw. And, and it kind of, it's progressed for the last, what, 35, 40 years. And, it's been a while, hasn't it? And, and culminated in a G.I. Joe package. So I, I think I'm, I think I can safely retire right now. Awesome. I mean, when you think about when, well, right, when you think about going and you know, going back to when you were a kid at that age, reading the Marvel comics and seeing like you know your Kirby's and your you know your Wagner's and your and whoever whoever was kind of doing it at that point. Like, um, I mean, what we, what was what were your thoughts when it was like, oh, I'm on the GI Joe brand now? I mean, how would that kid feel right now? Like, try and, t- try and take me through what that kid would be going through knowing this. It's still kind of surreal. All the stuff I get to work on. I get to work on so many fun brands. Like, I, I feel honored to be trusted with, with uh, intellectual property from, from all these companies. But it's still, I mean, those were my, like, rock stars at the time when I was reading comics were, you know, the, the artists specifically. And it's still, even though I worked very hard, through high school, college, and and afterwards, it still it still feels like how did I get here? Yeah. You know, I still I, I put the time in, but it still feels um, surreal to to actually be in the spot where I was. You know, that I looked up to when I was a kid. Absolutely. And and talking yeah. of your style, I mean, how did that? Because it's quite it's quite striking, quite recognizable. It has that kind of like almost like propaganda poster style thing going on in, in, in some cases, not in all cases, obviously. Yep. But, um, you know, how did that, how did you develop that, that really intriguing style? I was hell bent on being a comic book artist all the way. Like I was self-taught through high school. I never had art classes. And then I went to, um, I enrolled in a graphic design program in college. It, it was a pretty well-rounded program. So there was a lot of typography, letter forms, um, graphic design, advertising. And I, continued to try to over render and I'm not a very good um, sequential artist but I thought with time I would get to that point and it wasn't until a a professor of mine kind of suggested maybe maybe kind of switch gears and treat your illustrations as design and just kind of don't worry about the lines worry about the color and the and the, the motion and the and and that was a turning point for me where I could bring in design and illustration and that I remember pointing back to that time mm where it would it, it made sense to me at that point and I tried started trying it and it worked but it wasn't until like probably 
10 years later till like my style that I use now kind of fully coalesced. Yeah. But that definitely a turning point for me. Well, that's really cool. It's cool that you can actually pinpoint that moment in, the, in, a, yeah, in a sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Usually when I say that, it's like the, the most artists will go, I don't know. I just drew. <laughs> and then this came out. And then that's where I, you know, they, I suppose it is an element of like finding like a comfort zone as well, I suppose. And there was some, somewhere where you can kind of operate and feel like, yeah, this yeah. is me. This you're kind of finding yourself in a, in a strange way, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And there's also, I think, there's a huge uh, value and comfort in if somebody asks you to do a job that is just not your wheelhouse. Yeah. I, I've I've come, I've grown to the point where I'm I can safely say I don't think this is my I don't think I'm a fit for this. I know what I can do, and there's a there's a comfort and a and a an a, a assuredness that comes from that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized when I realized I can't I don't have to do everything every style perfectly that was very freeing for me i suppose it's also like because you, you you're seeing all artists aren't you you're seeing all styles you're seeing all these different things and you don't like a per, i'm not saying you you see this i'm saying in general people will see that and right. they will think they have to be everything to everybody when in actual fact that artist they're looking at there is doing one specific thing right. that artist right. there is doing one specific thing and it's like you're right like once you come to that realization of you don't have to do everything yeah. like you can just focus in one area then yeah, yeah. i mean it's, it's not a bad Very, thing to be rounded but like like you say yeah you, you can kind of find yeah. that that spot and there are people that can kind of just shift from media to media but for me and we hate was, those people don't we yes oh absolutely i i will <laughs> uh anytime i shake their anybody's hand like that i try to squeeze extra hard so they <laughs> you know take some of those medium skills away from them just break that that finger just try and break yeah. that yeah <laughs> just a single break yep amazing um yep. do not shake tom's hand if you go to a convention if you're a talented artist do not shake his hand um yeah i'll be all right um yep. okay, well, tell, right. mate now i know because we, we had a little chat beforehand this is the first time we've met so this is like yep. you know it's kind of yep. surreal we've had a little chat online or, already but um it, like you were telling me that obviously gi joe was a big part of your you kind of your grow your your childhood obviously i'm trying to think of the word there what's called childhood that's the one um take us through your experience with it. other than the comics that we, we kind of discussed i mean were the toys a big influence in your life as a kid you know if i it's funny because gi joe is i think of it as three things the toys the sunbow cartoon and the and the comics and as much as the comics inspired me the sunbow cartoon is really my G.I. Joe. Amazing. And it, they're all very, you know, they're yeah. they're intertwined, but there's one, you know, the, the one usually rises above the other two. And the Sunbow is is pretty much like what I consider G.I. Joe. I love um, the cartoon so, so do much. I. So Even much. though I just had this conversation with a friend today, I, outside of the initial few, first few miniseries, I've seen the whole series. I just can't, I don't have a good gri- grasp of the stories. Like I can't remember a lot. My when my when I put my daughter to bed, I uh, we she loves them, so we've been watching like an episode in bed so on, cool. on my phone every night. So and cool. uh, like, I don't remember these. I'm sure I've seen them multiple times, but mate, um, exactly the same. We only we are obviously in the UK. We only got a few VHS episodes. Right. I say a few. We got like twenty. I think it was twenty one um, episodes on VHS. So it was, and it was most of it was rebranded Action Force. But right. um, when it when it did turn to GI Joe, we got the GI Joe theme and all that kind of stuff as well. But I've been watching it probably on a daily basis for the last 15 years and I st- it takes so long to get through it's like so many episodes and you're right like have, there's n- I've got no grasp on any of the stories it's insane I'm glad I'm glad it's not just me because I I I can't figure out that phenomenon that why I can't remember and I I distinctly remember going home and at four o'clock every day on channel 29 it was like you get home and you watch it I just can't rem- I know I was there for it I just don't <laughs> I, I I trust my memory on that. I saw one the other day that was like I felt like it was the first time I'd ever seen it. Like I'd found I've got stumbled across the lost episodes or something, and it's right. so it's so true. Like you you put it on you think I do not remember this at all, and I can't even remember it now. Thinking about it, um, sure. Yeah. But I mean, some of them stand out to me. I, what give me one of your what were your one of your favorite episodes? Just out of interest, maybe the Fun House. Episode. That was a good one. Yes. Good. Yeah. Um. I'm, I love ones with just when it starts to get into the like crazy like um like i just saw the one i watched with my daughter tonight had fire bats in it and i don't ever remember seeing the fire bats in the cartoon but they were they were there and huge um, i remember as well weren't they just like much bigger than actual fire yeah. bat yeah 
yes <laughs> like a um, 16 seater like what is this yeah no totally man um i think for me worlds without end stands above a lot of them i just again that kind yeah. of kookier a little bit like paranormal yeah. like you know, paranormal like uh, sci-fi and stuff like that going yep. through the portal and all that kind of jazz uh anyway yeah. mate i'm here for all of it. Yep. Uh, well and funny enough i suppose your art style kind of like i don't know it, it kind of evokes the the cartoon a bit like when i look at let, let's let's jump on here then to this beauty master of disguise zartan which is just stunning not just as a deluxe figure as well but the packaging is outstanding and i look at that zartan face and it, it screams sunbow to me do you know what i mean so like yep. was that part of your thought process when doing him not distinctly uh they gave hasbro came to me with the concept for the package like they had come to me with a fully fleshed out idea that they wanted for a, a convention exclu- or a, a special event exclusive, put it that way. Did they have the spinning um, wheel on it at that point? Yeah. Oh, so they had so that cool. kind of worked out and they had it, they sent me the die line, which in printing parlance is just like the, the map of how that all package goes together. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't necessarily, I don't think I intentionally based it on um, the cartoon reference, but they provided 3d turnarounds of the actual uh, model for the toy but i think my love of the of the of the cartoon probably mapped over top of that and, yeah and took yeah. Over. yeah i think it's just the color the use of the color and it's like the you know the, the kind of simple like, this is sorry that sounded awful like calling it simplistic no, but no, like the, not- the, the simplistic like the the, the go- like the very simple lines but but effective of yeah, like yeah. the different you know where the where the skin change where the shadow is uh, it's just gorgeous, and you know the the wry smile with the cartoon teeth as well in it, because it's like it's almost yeah. like a line there and a line there, but you never quite finish it. And and I've, I've always thought that was a cool little technique in uh, they did in cartoon, uh, like yeah. in the mouths and stuff like that. Yeah, I found if uh, over over detailing for me starts to look weird, so I, I try to pull back where I can, and it, instances like that where I can hint at teeth without drawing them, it's. I'm always better off. Yeah, and it's always like, oh, I don't have to do that as well. <laughs> yeah, yes. right, right, exactly, right. <laughs> um, on. Uh, again, like, uh, uh, there's there's more to the... This is the thing, like, I think the, the wheel gimmick is brilliant and it kind of shows, you know, all the different heads that Zartan, and all the different masks that Zartan comes with in the package. Soft Master, Hard Master, Snake Eyes, uh, Storm Shadow, the, the kind of Dreadnought skull logo mask and everything. Yeah. But you've got stuff going on on the actual front cover that the the someone who just even gets this and, and has it out all the time will not see because uh, yeah. I just noticed something before we went on that I didn't see before and it's because it's so subtle in the top right hand zone of the box yeah. him as a sniper in yep. almost like this very subtle gray outline against like a dark gray and I mean dude that is just I mean you kind of I, I won't be able to even show it on screen I don't think yeah but it, love that. It, that was, uh, a big part of the and, and the the Hasbro uh, Cecil Cates is the is the um, art director on all the uh, classified packaging. He works with the with the different artists. He's the and, one that interviewed uh, you on Ten Twenty Seven as well, correct? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. So we got to know each other really well throughout this throughout the um, the, the Zartan project, and um, they really stress storytelling. So they really want you to kind of, especially with a bigger uh, canvas like this, bigger mm. than a, a traditional classified package they really want to get as much of that character story into the artwork and that this was so much fun to to put all that in that was a it was a pretty long project for me like it, that took a, a while to, and it was a lot of back and forth so it i was think pretty interesting. when the actual because there were leaks of the of the of the package uh early on yes. right yep. and when they were out it was difficult to see on some of the pictures because for some reason people use potatoes when they take pictures of these things <laughs> <laughs> that's what it seems like it's like yeah. i haven't got my camera on me so i'll just pick up this this dog turd off the floor and take a picture with that and right. what um <laughs> what you don't really get from those images from the leaks early on is all of the kind of beautiful like like you say the kind of graphic design aspect to it so obviously right. you've got the artwork in there of zartan in multiple poses and and things that, again that i only kind of like clock when i really study it the kind of everglades swamp segment mm-hmm. so that's really subtle because it's like it's almost like a just a little bit of the trees and the and the stuff hanging off the trees in like right. two-tone behind him as it, right it's right. Just and that was the goal was to just imply without like i don't i don't necessarily want people 
and I did it in a very graphic, uh, like angular way. I don't want people to focus on that, but yeah. I, I wanted to build the story without overtaking. That's not what you're. That's not the first thing you need to look at. It's like listening to a song and then hearing a guitar solo on the third listen yeah. that you hadn't heard the first time. Yeah, or finally learning the lyrics. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and going, oh, that's what they're saying. All right. right. Uh, no, it, it's absolutely stunning, dude. And I, I, it's one of my favorite kind of like, I don't know, it's one of my favorite the deluxe um, packages so far because I just love the the fact there's a lot of character focus on it like not again no, no nothing against the other ones because every like the, the packaging on classified and the artwork on classified has just been outstanding Absolutely. and i have not personally i have not got one classified figure that i think oh they've you know that's not very you know it's literally always so interesting it, such it, a cool take do you know what i mean it, so but this one's so character focused out of the deluxe ones because a lot of the other ones it's like you know all about the ornate design about it and stuff like that so I, that's one of the reasons i really like this one yeah it was it was a good opportunity to explore a little bit more because it was a, it was like outside of the the main collection so even the the croc master that's coming out that's a big box but it still only has the corner snipe yeah um, of worth of artwork but uh yeah this was this was a good opportunity for me and i was thrilled when it was when it was revealed to be they had asked me if I wanted to work on a G.I. Joe project, and it was a very quick yes. <laughs> and then, then I found out it was Zartan, and I was like, yes, perfect. And I, I got to see the sculpt before, well before the first one was revealed. So that was even fun to me to like, so as a collector, like, to, see, to see it, you know, way far ahead before the first one came out. Well, I should have asked you at the beginning, but like, who are your kind of favorite characters? And that way we can slip it in, and uh, if Lenny's watching, he can, uh, we can try and push it a bit to get yeah, another right, character right. to do. Uh, Sartan really was one oh, of my yeah. favorite of all time, and, and uh, Destro probably would be, the two of those would probably be very high on the list. Yeah, that's great, yeah. man. I'm so happy for you that you got Zartan. Like, I can't yeah. tell you, like, that. that's just so cool that him being, a, like, a big character as well for you. That's that's awesome. Yeah. I remember getting the original as a kid and hanging out the, on a Christmas morning and throwing him in the snow in the backyard. I'm like, it works, it works. It's so funny, isn't it? Like, there are so many memories, I think, of kids getting G.I. Joes, playing with them in the snow when they're not Arctic characters just because they got them at Christmas. Like, there's right. I've so right. many. Right. It's exactly right. the same it's scenario, fun. yeah. Yeah. It's it's just funny how that works out. I did actually get yeah. Blizzard for on Christmas though, so that that worked perfectly. Um, Probably no snow on Christmas. Yeah, well, that's another right. thing. No snow, right. so it was just like right. going around on the gr on the grass somewhere. Right. right. Um, so, like like you said, you you just said about the about seeing the toys bef before the general public. Um, yeah. it, you know, do you ever feel like do you ever feel pressure when you're doing these? being a fan knowing the community do you ever feel a bit of pressure like when this gets stuff gets revealed do you ever feel a little nervy about how it's going to be taken like by the, the by the, the fandom maybe not with the toys with posters i do okay uh, sometimes i'm like i wonder how this if the fan base is going to agree with my take or feel it with a poster i'm always concerned did i miss a big element of a movie that somebody loves or there's like did i did i get the essence of the movie with the toys i feel like it's more if you're getting the character and you nail him and you get all the details right i feel that should should satisfy most people i know not everyone is satisfied all the time but i didn't have a i didn't i was more excited on this than than nervous that's good oh, i'm not trying to give you a complex i feel like that no, with, uh, no, no, no. whenever i ask that question to anyone i just all of a sudden i think oh god have i made them think that they should be feel loads of pressure and stress <laughs> about this because it shouldn't be such a mess because I'm going to be in my head about it. It's like oh, I can't do it now, Chris. Um, have I done? Look, I'm showing you my, my image. Have I done everything? Don't yeah. Don't be like that at all. Um, <laughs> uh, well, okay. Well, let's Zartan. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful work. Well done. <laughs> that sounds really patronising. Well done. Well, well done. Well done, Tom. You've done a great job. Uh, but seriously, beautiful job. Love Zartan. Let's move on to another. A cheeky revealed character that was revealed at 1027 which people were kind of like i think it i don't know did had no idea it was getting revealed i mean the bat had been revealed at PulseCon, so we all kind of thought well, bat and the alley viper were kind of together and we'd known we'd heard it was the worst kept secret in the blooming fandom as always sure but when it comes to 1027 you get to reveal alley vipers and you get to reveal them with your wicked art for that kind of almost like again that really cool propaganda style post. Now this is very propaganda in my opinion because it's got Cobra yes, Commander, yes. 
very get, intentional. And you got yeah. to put Destro on it as well, right? I know, I know. I was like, well, okay, I can do the Alley Viper, but can I sneak in? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, right, well, then we're going to do that. And then that actually made it to the box too, which <sighs> initially the project was, I think I think we had designed it as a poster first, and then they said, kind of let's let's uh, t- do the poster the way you want it to look, and then we'll retrofit it for the box. But it all it it all got on there. So um, that's amazing. Yeah. So not only have you <laughs> not only have you done one of your favorite characters, but you got the other favorite character on right. a box that isn't right. even for his figure. <laughs> How have you done that? I that- don't know. Okay. that's magic so uh, at this point when you did this okay when did you do this art because was this a recent thing or was this way back because it's been on the box art for yes. centuries the alley viper yeah this, this i did before zartan so that that may have been i i forget the time frame but that has probably been finished for well over a year at this point wow um, I know he was he was early on because he was on the back of the box. Yeah, I mean he was back of the box. I think there were changes made to the figure at the end. You know, like then that's you know a little bit of why it was pushed down the line a little bit. But mate, absolutely, I love like the kind of I love the fact a a that you've got the 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 kind of visor lifted up on on the main one at the top, and the and the little poses in as well is really cool as well. There's like don't again please don't take this the wrong way, but there's a very cute vibe about this. Like I I, oh no. I don't. If, if as long as you enjoy it, I don't care what how you. <laughs> I don't care what adjectives you use. It's adorable, is what I'm getting yeah. at. Um, Sweet. I love. I love the. Yeah. Again, the very cartoon aesthetic of it, but not even like the Sunbow cartoon, obviously. Like, and not even the Deke cartoon, which is where the Alley Viper would have appeared in. But right. like in terms of like the the style in general, there's a real kind of like fun cartoony vibe about it. Um, but again, love of the font of Cobra because again, that that again screams that propaganda kind of poster, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, I have. I, I use those fonts. I have a, a very small selection of like go-to fonts for for things just like this, and it was it, that was a neat. That was a very quick um, selection of font that that did not take long. And the color again, so vibrant. I mean, it's an Alley Viper, isn't it? But I mean, was yeah. the Alley Viper one? I mean, was that a figure when you were a kid that you were like no, interested in? Not at all. I didn't have, I didn't have, I don't, I don't have my original Joes anymore, but um, that, he may have actually even come after, um, like, I got out of yeah. collecting, because I don't even, I don't know when the character was introduced. So like 89, but, I think, I think it was 89. Yeah, I was probably out of it by that point, because I started early, I was, I was in ninth grade by that point, so I was probably well past, well past Joe at that stage of my life, but uh Luckily, I looped back around at the end. <laughs> You're not going to believe this, Tom. It's 1989. I am a I am a GI Joe date wow. sort of savant when it, I'm like Rain Man when it comes own, to that. Start your own GI Joe podcast. Yeah, I should do really, shouldn't I? What am I doing? Right. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and again, like the color that really works. I'd say to your start, it kind of works to your strong point, doesn't it? Like your uh, yeah. again, another strength of yours is color. Um, I've seen it in. In fact, what is interesting, I did notice a theme in a lot of like previous work that you've done using the oranges and the blues and that kind of those kind of color schemes so i I think even a funny story somebody mentioned on twitter when i was i was kind of like umming and ahhing as to who we could see on 1027 yada 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 right and someone posted tom whalen's going to be on uh, I, he, I know he's going to be on. He, he's mentioned it to, so he must have been someone right. that knew you. And he right. said, and he uses a lot of oranges and blues. Just saying. So, oh, like really? that I mean, person literally really called that out before it happened, before it was even revealed. So, yeah, because I didn't. I know there was so much chatter, and I follow a lot of it online about the Alley Viper, mm. and no, nobody kind of even directly obviously people were thinking about it maybe but nobody directly asked me if if i was i, I was i was sitting on that for so long and then when they came to me for the 1027 thing and said leading up to that they said the alley viper should be revealed by 1027 and then you can show it off and then by the time we recorded that they said well you're going to you're going to be the one to reveal it it was that 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 was like the coolest thing to me that i got to, after all that time got to got to show it off i mean it was great like, and it was a cool little segment as well and yeah, yeah i mean yeah, yeah. Th- that was awesome you must have been buzzing um to be on was, that yeah. yeah that was I really was, yeah. really cool yeah. Yeah, i'm yeah. so jealous um did, 
<laughs> and funny enough, it was just down the bloody road from me. Like it's like 0.4 miles in that direction. Just if you if you if you ever want to know. Yeah, I saw you when you said that's where you're coming from. I didn't realize you were that close to to ground zero. Yeah, literally. Like I could I can see it from where I am. Right. <laughs> I can smell it. I can smell the plastic. <laughs> I can smell the design going on right now. Um, amazing. But um, no, that's a mate. That's awesome. And again, like. I think when the Alley Viper was revealed, a hugely positive reaction uh, in general, wasn't it? Like, I don't think there was, there weren't many people that were kind of annoyed that an Alley Viper was finally out and it was looking no, very I, good. I think, I think I'm, I'm speaking as a collector. I am so um, impressed by the way I know that first wave of figures that came out, there was uh, some within the community, some backlash about it. It was too sci fi, it was too Fortnite, it was too video game. And I just, I just love the way that the line has kind of morphed with, with that um, conversation. And I feel like these are, these are like perfect right now. This line is just hitting on all cylinders. There are so little to pick at for me, yeah. like so little nitpicks that um, I just, I, I love the way this, where this line is going. Package art could be better though, couldn't it? I'm yeah, just yeah. kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> It's so true though. Like you, you've got yeah. It's a really good point. Like the the classified line for me is just outstanding. I'm so happy yeah. it exists. Like, and even though there's a lot of like I don't know, drama and and angst and stuff around the kind of like what is effectively more more really the reality of the world than 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 this. I mean, it's just it's just a different way to frame that angst and anxiety Absolutely. and anger and Absolutely. it stress. happens in every fandom. And it's I just I just find it remarkable that they've it existed early on and I really feel like it's grown beyond that. Like I feel, I hear very little and you may hear more, but I, I hear very little negativity anymore. It's more, it's a lot of, and especially after PulseCon, that panel just, I sat with my daughter and watched it live and I was, I was like tearing up when I saw the Sky Striker and I don't even collect three and three quarter. And I'm like, I, I have to get that. Like I was, <laughs> I, I said, that's the modern day. I, I said to um, uh, a really good friend of mine, uh, that uh, that's the modern day equivalent of the uh, Sears wish book at, at Christmas. Like that, that I got that feeling again yep. when I was a kid, just opening the book and seeing all the new stuff. Yeah, for me it would be the Argos catalog, but I know what you I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm an analog for that in in the UK. Oh, but mate, yeah. like, I tell you, like when I think about when I was a kid and the joy this line brought me in just like. You know, in magazines, in comics, in uh, TV commercials, like that you would see, you'd have to like be there ready to see it. It's not one of those things where you can just, but like, you know, go onto YouTube and, and, and put it on. Right. Like you would right. be like so excited to see it, or you'd be recording a cartoon and one of those commercials were, were on between it and you'd be like, yes, I've got it on, I've got it on tape. And, yeah, you know, right. the, it's that kind of thing. And yep. now I, I come to like this part of my life as a forty-year-old, and <laughs> <laughs> not giving too much away. Even though my name's Diagnostic Eighty, I think you can work out where where my age falls in the current yeah. okay. climate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, like when I think back to then, I think God, I, I, I would just be as a child in this day and age. I'd be going absolutely insane at the, you know, the the pulse con, at the reveals, at the 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 the, the product that is literally flooding our yeah. way now. The Super Seven stuff is like blowing me away too. I, that that I'm like I'm having trouble like reconciling everything. Like, how do I? What do I need? I mean, I need it all, but what? Like, how do I? I have to come up with a formula. Like, if I have this character, I, maybe I. That's it for that, but. The formula is Rob Bank over. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I don't know the full formula, but robbing a bank is in there somewhere. Um, Skip on mortgage payment. Yeah. Ultimates Wave Two. Uh, well, Ultimates in general. Sunbow yeah. base. So you must be absolutely buzzing at that. Yeah, I um, I ordered the everything in the first wave except Duke, and as great as he looked, I, I really still love the classified Duke. So I'm like, I, I can, I can justify leaving him on the on this on the on the checkout that'll change so, you'll you'll see one but, out at a convention I'm, and you'll be I'm like i'm worried about tomorrow i'm worried about the reveals tomorrow what uh what's what's on its way so 
well i think flint we can we can safely flint, assume flint. yeah, yeah. Uh, and i'm so happy they've got that little the, the newspaper from worlds without end in there because that is mm-hmm. wicked so happy about yep. that yep. um tom mate uh, we, we're kind of coming to the end here but i want to keep chatting to you but before we get to the end i mean what are you what have you got kind of working on at the moment what any projects you can kind of tell us about or is everything like g14 classified <laughs> Um, continuing work on Power Rangers Lightning Collection packaging, and uh, let's see what else. I that's uh, can we talk about that quickly actually because sure, that is sure. beautiful. I mean, I will say now I was a huge Power Rangers fan series one when I was a kid, loved it, um, right. and and ended up meeting some of my favorite characters from that uh, convention and did the dance with, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, with the Black Rat Power Ranger, absolutely super, loved that. Power Rangers now. Hasbro are smashing it out of the park with the figures, yeah. like to the point where I would collect it if I had the the scope to do so. Uh, and that's it's, it's massive, and it went it like once it caught fire, it it went very quickly. And it there's there's I, I've done well over a hundred illustrations at this point. <laughs> it, yeah, they they put out a lot very quickly without to me. I without don't without telling you, <laughs> right? I don't collect them, so I don't like have to like manage the collection of that but um it feels like they were that that collection was well paced oh my goodness and again like it's just real quality the, some of the characters they have nailed like yep. that i mean finster's amazing and the uh the kind of fish kind of character that oh my, yeah. Herantic, my goodness yeah i love the working on the monster ones yeah how much i was gonna say how much fun is that like because uh, again like that must be great to kind of really like again flex the muscles a little bit on uh yeah. on those kind yeah, of characters the rangers themselves there was some some reuse that i could do uh, like on helmet shapes and kind of re re put new visors in the helmets and stuff yeah but the the monsters were like from scratch every time there was no no reuse on the illustration so that was always like a, a fun and they would take longer so that would i'd get to like really dig in to those a little bit deeper than the, than the rangers themselves it's so awesome and again like yeah really loving that line uh even though I'm not, i've got a few of them actually because hasbro keeps sending me bloody boxes full of uh right. product before every event which again i'm not complaining about right. i was right. kind of hoping for a box prior to 1027 with ali vipers and cobra <laughs> officers <laughs> bats right. didn't right. didn't come so i'll i'll All- yeah. Didn't get the memo, Hasbro, so if you could send that through. Uh, Tom, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, mate. Um, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it and, and talking about like the process and, and all the art you do and everything. So, yeah, again, thank you for coming on. If you And, again, like you're more than welcome to come on again in the future. If- I would love to just, just get on and, and chat about because I, I, I watch the show all the time, so I happy to join in again in that case how would you fancy coming on the show maybe on a weekly when the alley viper comes out officially and we can sure. kind of talk about the figure like when we have it in hand how's that sound absolutely sure awesome yeah. well I'm... i have one back here if you want to see it oh, now show me <laughs> sorry okay. that's rubbing it in. yeah it is Hang yeah on. go get it we'll, we'll rub it into everybody look at that just how did i not see that in the first place look at that well, in that case, we might as well get you on the weekly come in and we'll talk about your alley I, I, thing. Never, I never said I was going to open this one. Oh, man. <laughs> that's one I'm going to... I open them all, but that's one I'm going to... Good thinking. Going to leave, leave on the shelf sealed and, and get another to open. That's beautiful, though. I'm so jealous. Yes. You have no idea. Yeah. But, Tom, I couldn't be happier for you, mate, especially for getting Zartan, for squeezing Destro on the alley viper art as well. Genius move. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet you thank you so much um thanks yeah, for having me on. absolutely anytime like i said you're gonna have to come on the weekly again pretty soon so uh yeah we'll I'll, I'll be here for it awesome man well uh yeah that brings us to the end of the interview um before we go actually tom where can people find you sure uh my website is uh strongstuff.net my instagram is strongstuff and twitter is strongstuff tom strong stuff yeah that correct because yeah correct we correct you've got that all correct um right. thank Thanks for verifying. <laughs> I'll put this as a game show you, that you win a prize now. You get this Zartan. Yay. <laughs> um, you don't because I'm, I'm, this is my only one and yeah, I'm keeping that. Um, Got it. I will, I can't believe we haven't talked about his, his color change feature. How insane was that? As soon as he came in, he went right in the freezer <laughs> and it's it's very impressive. It's it's actually way more impressive than the original. I can't, I'm, I should, I'm going to do that. Like as soon as yeah. we get off this call, I'm get doing it. In. Get him in there. Uh, dude, absolute pleasure. I'll put all the links, uh, like you said, to your to all your your socials in the description below. 
Guys, uh, that's it for this instalment of the Full Force Redacted. Thank you to my wonderful guest, Tom Whalen. See you next time. And Tom, are you ready to do what we always do at the end of one of these shows? On three. One, two, three. Full Full Force. Force! Perfect. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force access granted